Big money transfers, the worm, and former Italian prime ministers. Yep, it's room 442. What a show, huh? Wow. <laughs> Just teasing the audience right now. Um, a crazy weekend of football. We'll get to the games and some of the storylines uh, later. But the headlines making the rounds today on this Monday with the transfer deadline only a couple of days away. It's going to get really crazy very, very soon. Some crazy num numbers being, being thrown around right now. So what's making the back pages on this day? Well, the Daily Mirror has, of course, at last, yes, it's official, Sean Dyche is manager of Everton. We'll get to that shortly. Big news breaking this morning. Jacques Cancelo is likely leaving Man City, moving on to Bayern Munich on loan to the end of the season. Um, the Express has Al Nasser confirming major Cristiano Ronaldo U-turn, despite the Stars' £170 million a year wages. Uh, the story there is Rudy Garcia's manager says that, oh yeah, in a couple of years' time he'll be back playing in Europe. And by the way, uh, all his players, all his teammates are getting him in the ball too often and they're not playing very well around him. So no one saw that happening at all. Um, this one's gathering steam as we record. Chelsea make £105 million Enzo Fernandez bid that would smash the British transfer record. I'm hearing now £115 million, by the way. Um, and the Mirror also has this Copa del Rey semi-final draw delivers. Another El Clasico awaits in Real Madrid and Barcelona. Um, I think the biggest story right now must be Cancelo, Mikey. I mean, no one saw this coming. Mm -hmm. This guy's been absolutely brilliant for most of his tenure at Man City. Not a great World Cup. Hasn't been playing that much recently, but apparently a big bust of Pep Guardiola. Yeah, and we saw it a little bit with Portugal too at this past uh, World Cup where he started to sort of fall out of favor with the manager and wasn't the first choice left back despite coming in with fantastic form that seemed to carry over right now to Manchester City. What I'm really surprised about is that Manchester City don't have a ton of fullback depth, right? To, so to see Cancelo make this move over to Bayern Munich, who by the way is competing against Manchester City in the Champions League, is a little bit shocking because all they have is Rico Lewis and Kyle Walker as only natural fullbacks. Ake has stepped in. He's, he's been serviceable at left back, but he's not a natural left back. Mm -hmm. So it is a little bit surprising the way this is sort of played out. Not to mention the fact that he plays on the left at Chelsea, <laughs> but also on the right. He can't play on the right. Afonso Davis, pretty good left-sided fullback. Mm -hmm at Bayern Munich. This is what I was thinking initially when I saw this. They have the perfect player for that position right now, who is, we all know very much, very talented and young. It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. And sometimes when he plays on the right, okay, so what, you're going to take out Benjamin Pavard? I don't know. It just doesn't, to me, it doesn't seem like Bayern needs him. And what, is he going to go and be a substitute player at Bayern? That's not Joao Cancelo's, like, he shouldn't be doing that right now, even though he hasn't, he didn't have a great World Cup. He's not doing that well at City. I still think he's a phenomenal, phenomenal player. And wherever he goes, he should be starting. Maybe this is the beginning of Fonzie playing more forward, oh. right? I love the sound of that. Yeah, but, but I mean, it really is. It, when I saw this this morning, it kind of blew my mind because, yeah, he's been so good for most of his time there. Um, Enzo Fernandez to Chelsea, uh, 105, 115 million. He's a really good player, good young player. But that's crazy, isn't it? It's ludicrous, that amount. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, right? He is, like you said, a good up-and-coming prospect. But by no means, in my opinion, is he a sure thing to become one of the best players in the world. Like, when I think of that price tag, you think of people who have made big moves in the past. You think of guys like, like Neymar. Like, he was a sure thing, essentially, when he joined Barcelona. He's someone who warrants that type of price tag. Enzo Fernandez is not someone who warrants that price tag. Maybe that's just the way the market is, but... What Chelsea's doing right now is just, they're, it's game changing, it's annoying, but I mean, Chelsea fans must be loving this. I guess. I don't know. James and I were talking off camera and we were saying like, if, yeah, if he's worth a hundred and what, maybe 15 now, mm -hmm. if Mbappe goes to Madrid, it's going to be for like 250. Like At if least. you compare, At just, least. that's what I'm saying. Yeah. If you compare him to players like, you know, Mbappe, how much are they worth? It's just kind of getting sick the game, of it. I mean, the old saying is the game's gone, but the numbers are astronomical. They're getting out of control. I remember when, when Luis Figo went to Real Madrid for, I think, 42 million pounds or euros. Mm -hmm. And that was like, 42? This is crazy. Even Paul Pogba, what was it, like 
seven years ago when he yeah. made the move yeah. back to Manchester United. It was a world record fee for Crazy. about like 80 million. Yeah. Crazy. Um, very quickly, Copa del Rey. Yeah. The King's Cup. Yeah. El Clasico, you happy about that? You know what? Barca tend to do better against stronger teams, and that's always it, right? If you're playing against good teams, you're keeping that consistency, and nobody is not going to love seeing El Clasico. So, I mean, it's, it's always fun. It's always good. I think there's too many El Clasicos. But I do. It, there's too many nowadays. No, Seems but... every month there's one. No, <laughs> this one's not until March. Okay, fair enough. I'll so wait. It's, not, it's just the way the draw went. The other side, you have Osasuna and Athletic, so it, it could have gone either way. Uh, the one move we've been talking about for a long time now is Sean Dyche to Everton. Sean Dyche, of course, formerly of Burnley. Um, it's official today. He's made the move to Goodison Park. And listen, Sean Dyche has a, a good career, a good resume behind him, of course. He's coached for 10 years at Burnley is in the Prem for six of those years. Coach a certain style of football, of course, but he now moves to Everton, but is he the right fit? Long balls, tough tackles, a 4-4-2 setup, and not particularly fun to watch. Sean Dyche's brand of football wouldn't win any awards for flair, but it was enough to keep Burnley in the Premier League for six consecutive seasons, and to guide them to Europe for the first time in over 50 years. Delivering repeated mid-table finishes on a shoestring budget, Deitch became the longest serving manager in the top flight, overseeing the Clarets for 10 seasons before losing his position last April. The 51-year-old now steps into the top job at Everton, only his third managerial post, and the task before him is daunting to say the least. Without a win since October last year, Everton have lost eight of the last nine games in all competitions. The club has suffered its worst ever start, with only 15 points from 20 games, and after amassing only three victories so far this campaign, the Toffees have fewer wins than any other team in England's top four divisions. So, with the club in freefall, is Sean Dyche the right man to save Everton from relegation? Well, the fixture list doesn't look promising. Dyche must take his new side to London on Saturday to face league leaders Arsenal before lining up against Liverpool at Anfield a week later. While it's hard to see Everton getting any joy against the Gunners, Sean Dyche has a long habit of getting under Jurgen Klopp's skin. The two managers first clashed back in December 2018 when Klopp suggested Burnley were hell-bent on injuring his players. Then in January 2021, there was more beef after the Clarets ended Liverpool's 68-game unbeaten run at home. You know when we come to these places, you know we are allowed to actually fight, we are allowed to actually try and win. That's all it was. You Not know? usually the managers though. No, 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 we just a couple of things. I said nothing, absolutely nothing that should be out the normal. It's just two managers fighting for their teams, wanting to win a game. So if Sean Dyche can mastermind another win at Anfield, could it prove a turning point for the Toffees season? Or is avoiding relegation now an impossible job for Everton's eighth manager in as many seasons? So Dyche now at Everton, and he can, as I mentioned there, re renew his hostilities with Jurgen Klopp. Um, it got me thinking about <clears throat> managerial stereotypes. This guy is seen as a 4-4-2, no-nonsense, long-ball manager. But it is that fair? Sam Allardyce, known as 4-4-2, old-fashioned defensive. The truth was, Allardyce is actually very progressive in his methods. In coaching, Pep Guardiola, Tiki Taka, false nines, 4-3-3. He says, formations mean nothing. He's the most evolutionary of all the managers. That's unfair, you ask me. You can clock more than just heavy metal and the Gagan press. Uh, Marcelo Bielsa, high octane attack first. Well, they, that could be true, actually, <laughs> in fairness. And so Alex, you know, known as the hairdryer, you know, for, for screaming in players' faces. Players loved playing for Sir Alex Ferguson. Do you think we just stereotype managers too, too frequently? Yeah, of course we do. What else are we doing, right? <laughs> like, it makes sense. They have a certain style of play usually and we just kind of put them in that box and sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad but I mean there definitely is a certain kind of football that Mr. Deitch prefers but I mean he got the job done for so long at uh, Burnley like you can't I, I wouldn't say it's a bad thing yeah when I when I hear managerial stereotypes the first thing I think of of course is Greg Danny he was notorious for being a manager that could only play with wingers he wanted wingers for the longest time now working in tandem with other general managers, he actually never got the wingers that he wanted. Yet, Greg Vanny evolved and he changed his formation to a bit of a 4-2-3-1, played a little bit narrower in the midfield. If you remember TFC, when they won the MLS Cup, they played in a bit of a, a diamond as well. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, Greg Vanny evolved and found a way to win and, and be successful. I think, yeah, it is a bit, it's a bit unfair. And, and reports are they're bidding £45 million for Conor Gallagher of Chelsea. <laughs> Right, not your typical 
Sean Dyche type player, you would think, but a guy that maybe will epitomize the new Sean Dyche. So I think it's a great hire. And we'll see. Give everyone a second chance, right? <laughs> we can all change. We're hoping Mike Chee changes at some point. At you know? some but, point, he's, no, we're not he, too he, sure. he's up next, Bob, by the way. Bring our back in. But uh, <laughs> you'll be back later in today's show. I'll try and change. <laughs> when we come back, though, it's to the weekend headlines. What a weekend it was. Welcome back to Room 442. James Sharman, Sarah Peraria, and Albert Vatanian joins us now for what was uh, just a great weekend of football across across the world, quite frankly. I don't know where we start here, really, but we're going to start with Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> because what I do, I, I ask these guys to give us some headlines that kind of stood out to them over the weekend. And Sarah definitely found one, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, so my headline is... Silvio Berlusconi begged to stick to his sex workers' promise after Monza beat out Juventus. Now this to me, I mean, obviously there's more to the story, but I saw this and I was like, there's no way I'm not choosing this. So Berlusconi, <laughs> the owner of Monza, promised the team that he would bring in some, a word I'm not going to use for this show, a bunch of women, mm -hmm. um, if they were to beat Juventus. And they beat Juve 2-0, which is massive because Juve are now 13th in Serie A. Monza are now 12th. They were playing in Torino. There is there is not it, lots it's going It's amazing on the ways you can inspire and motivate football. <laughs> right? And big shock upset. I don't know. I'm, I can't I can't say I'm surprised they won the match. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. How many teams does this guy own? Well AC Milan was a big one of course, right? Yeah. He, he's so shady. This guy, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, listen, the Serie A is pretty shitty right now as well. Juve are only down there because they had a 15 point deduction mm -hmm. for their issues, uh, financial issues recently. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I don't know what more we can really say <laughs> about this story, Sarah, but uh, I'm not surprised. It's Berlusconi. Yeah. It's kind of what he does, right? Um, Albert, what, what stood out to you? I'm sticking to the Serie A as well. Napoli, mm -hmm. uh, again, they beat Roma 2 1. 13 point lead in Syria at the moment. Um, lots to talk about this weekend in world football. A lot of nice goals. You can talk about Matoma's goal against Liverpool in the FA Cup. But if we have the goal here, Victor Osimhen's goal uh, against Roma was fantastic. Set up by Kovac Skelia, the assist leader in Syria. He can have it here. Kovac Skelia crosses it in. And just being able to do this with defenders on you, the ball didn't take the ground, top fins. Also, it's not Matoma for Yeah, so Mourinho actually said after the game, he goes, Osimhen is like Drogba. But he couldn't wow. just give him that nice compliment, wow. right? He goes, he's like Drogba, but Drogba didn't dive. Actually, he did dive. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Of course. Brilliant player, Drogba, of yeah. course. But this guy, he might be the best center forward right now in Europe. I mean, it's tough he's to say. Really I hear that a lot good. too. But at the same time, I always go back to it. Look what Holland's doing. 25 mm -hmm. goals, right? That's true. There's a lot of good center forwards, but right now in Italy, he's definitely one of the best. Uh, Mourinho also, after the game, said, congratulations to Napoli. They won the Scudetto. They he knows exactly what he's doing, though, right? Because <laughs> whoever, when, if you're from Naples, and I've talked to a friend who has family there, they're very superstitious. Mm -hmm. So he knows exactly what he's doing. But listen, 13-point lead, barring an incredible collapse. Milan lost again. Yes, it's Habit, Napoli's. 4-0, I yeah. believe it was, right? It's incredible story. Shocking. Honestly, it's an incredible story. Yeah. Monza might do well, though. Yeah. Don't, don't rule out Monza. They just shoot up the they table. They come right up the table, <laughs> depending on what's happening there behind closed doors. Um, okay, mine, mine today focuses on, on Albert's favorite team, Wrexham. In oh. the FA Cup, uh, they drew Sheffield United 3-3. Just a brilliant FA Cup fourth round match here. Um, Hollywood heartbreak Ryan Reynolds goes on FA Cup roller coaster. He was very visible. He was more visible in this game than Gianni Infantino mm. during a World Cup match. You know, <laughs> He knows who the cameras are, does Ryan Reynolds, but uh, he, he's doing a great job there. It's a feel good story, Sarah. For some reason, Albert won't accept it. I just don't understand this at I just, all. I don't know something about Ryan one. Reynolds. I've what is it? Who there was a him. moment where the, where the camera panned to him and he was bowing to the crowd af, af, as they were cheering his name. Well, wouldn't you? They're cheering no, his he's name. Bowing to the, watch the game, bowing to the crowd. Listen, I'm happy for Wrexham <laughs> and the people there. I'm just not a big Ryan Reynolds fan. I don't know. It's a feel good so happy story, right? You know, in, an era, in an era where we have like you know hedge funds and and oil states buying teams, we've got a couple of personalities buying a team really ambitious and yeah they're spending really a lot of money for that league right now yeah. they're on the cusp of promotion not there yet of course Sarah but 
we should be happy and just celebrate this, shouldn't we? I think so. I think, yeah, like you said, it's feel good. It's a nice story. And he is a Canadian that is getting involved in yeah, a good. team in England. I, think I don't hate the guy. I'm just, uh, yeah, I don't know. You might. This is yeah. It's a very Canadian thing, you know, where you hammer success stories overseas. Oh, yeah, I don't sure. know what it is about Canadians. I mean, listen, the Brits aren't much better, mind you. Mm -hmm. You know, build them up, tear them down. But I think there might be a jealousy here. Ooh. I really enjoyed that game. I mean, John Egan scored. I was even happier. Oh, like, it was amazing. They it still was... have a chance, though, right? Wrexham still has a chance to get through. Yeah, and going to Bramall Lane now, yeah. splitting the revenue, more money coming into the club. It's just a brilliant story. And just showing, once again, how the FA Cup is the greatest knockout tournament in world sports. They were talking about it on North American TV yesterday during the, uh, was the AFC Championship game? Were they really? Or the NFC Championship game. Yeah, one of the games. It was Rob McElhaney was there. Of course he was. Well, he's like a Philadelphia talking, fan, right? Yeah, we're like talking fan. about Wrexham. Yeah. yeah. On North he's American television. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. yeah. This is true. And no, Rob sorry, McElhaney, Ryan. who didn't know who he was until I saw the yeah, documentary. Exactly. But still, he's a big, big player as well. But yeah, great story. Long may it continue. And, and maybe in 10 years from now, we're talking about Wrexham in the Premier League and then beating Albert's Tottenham. You never Ooh. know. All right, we come back. Mikey's going to join us once again. Uh, some great social videos going viral this past weekend. Welcome back. So the fun continues across social media throughout the weekend, as per usual. Some great videos went, went viral. Um, my favorite came from, once again, the, the FA Cup. Atherton Stanley <laughs> against Leeds United. And, and I don't condone pitch invasions, right? They're, they're pretty boring usually. But on this one occasion, the guy has to get, you know, an, an applause. Um, we've all tried the worm, I'm sure, at times. <laughs> I'm sure some of us can do the worm. Oh, yeah, I've right? tried it. I, I, did it turn no, out okay? No, no. Imagine this doing that. No, I know. I, I, I hurt my back horribly, actually, <laughs> when I tried it. Um, but but this, <laughs> this fan jumps in the field and, and does just that. I love hearing the fans, too. Like, look at that. That's a legit it. worm, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's good. I like the security. It doesn't really run over no, that. It watches no. the full worm. A good worm. Yeah, it's well done. What would be your go-to dance if you're going to jump on, on the pitch, Mikey? Say at TFC, for example. You got uh -huh. bored of sitting in the press box, went down there. What are you doing? Like, do you know what the Millie Rock is? What do you think? The Millie Rock? I have no idea what the Millie Rock is. I don't know the Millie Rock. Is. Yeah. What is it? Show it to us. Yeah, that's the man. That's the Millie Rock, bro. Too much pressure, guys. I don't, I don't know why, but Macarena is popping in my head right now. Macarena, yeah. <laughs> just turn to the fans. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, I don't know why. But... It'd be really funny, actually. Yeah. yeah, especially if you were doing it. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then arrest them <laughs> at the same time. I'd probably try a pathetic. Maybe the robot. That's all I got. I can see the robot. Just do like one arm. Yeah. You know, but nothing else. That's about it. Is that your go-to? <laughs> That's my go-to. Yeah, yeah, listen, okay. do you think this can dance? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I I'm think like so. the Tin Man in Wizard of Oz. How old were you when you tried the worm? Uh, I was probably much younger. Probably your age. That's you the know? last time? Probably. I think we should get a James Sharon yeah. worm. Back. The worm was popular like yeah. late 90s. Remember Scotty Too Hotty? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I mean, he was doing it. Man. All right, what you got? What do you find? Across Dominic the, uh, Telford. Media? He's a center forward for Crawley Town in League Two. So he scores a goal against Salford. The fans are chanting, you're just, I don't want to say, I don't know if I can, can I say it? Yeah. You're a shite Andy Carroll. He scores and sings it back to the fans. Here, take a look. And then he scores. I love it. He's got a ponytail. And that's the only reason why he's a shite Andy Carroll. Them in front of the fans, he also posts it on his own social media. I saw account. that on Brilliant. League Two shit housery. Love and, it. And that's Salford, right? That's Salford, the team yeah. owned by Beckham and Gary Neville, oh, Neville. And Phil yeah, Neville right. and Nicky Butt. I think Paul Scholes is involved there, of course. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's brilliant. Good banter. By the way, and if you're worse than Andy Carroll, oh my god, you're pretty bad. Did you see Andy Carroll this weekend? I didn't even know he was still playing for Reading. At yeah. Reading, no he, got, he got sent off. Yeah. He was awful. That challenge was brutal. Yeah, it was it was horrendous. All right, Mikey, you're the one that's usually absorbed in social media because you're so hip and cool. <laughs> Come on. Uh, what, what, did you, what did you find this weekend? Um, so this is a clip that I, I was come on. This was a clip I was looking at, uh, and it came across my feed. I watched this clip about a hundred times over and over because I couldn't just quite fathom it. Now. I'm not one for time-wasting tactics. I actually find it quite annoying. Yeah, right. Back in the day, you didn't roll around like Neymar? No, no, no. Yeah, no, you no, told no. me you did. No, no, no. He's diving, such a diver. Diving is a different story, but time-wasting tactics, I, I, I actually despise it. 
But this one I can sort of appreciate. If Sean, just roll the clip there. Ah, oh. <laughs> that drives me insane. So again, like, what came out of this incident, I guess let's call it, was just the, the referee got the call right. It's a rare instance where I think the ref gets it right. It's just a yellow card for the goalkeeper. You can make the argument that the player, the way he reacted, would have deserved a yellow, but who can blame him, man? I, I would have reacted the same way, but I see where the goalkeeper is coming from, too. It's actually one of the instances I don't fault to either side. I don't, I don't like it. But not, I mean, you got, it's, quick, it? it's quick thinking by the keeper. He's yeah. off his line completely. If that ball comes in quick, they're probably going to score. So you got to do something. Yeah, I mean, at uh, what point being does, on the other does, side, it drives you nuts. At what point does like gamesmanship cross the, the boundaries, mm -hmm. right? Of actually breaking the rules, right? And in so many parts of the world, if you can con the referee or the assistant referee, it's part of the game. Mm -hmm. That's taking it probably a little bit far. But I, it's I constant. How many times yeah. do you see a guy? get injured at one end of the pitch, stay down, doesn't get the call, yep. the team gets the and ball back, he's back up flying. Yeah. It's I, constant. I think referees should be more, uh, I guess, vigorous when it comes to carding, cautioning for players when they do time. We, we saw over the weekend or early last week when Arsenal was playing Manchester City and Kyle Walker would, would run the ball out for a corner kick. He'd pick up the ball <laughs> and just subtly put it back onto the pitch. Mm -hmm. He's right. doing the exact same thing this goalkeeper at, is. But, but, but at the same time, do you want to see the, also the World Cup where they stop the clock every time the referee thought someone's time wasting and we saw 10, 11 minutes of added time. I didn't mind time. it. I actually yeah, didn't mind actually, it. I thought yeah. I wouldn't like it, but watching it back from the World Cup, I enjoyed that. From a producer standpoint, I remember doing those live shows in the yeah. World Cup and thinking, I hate this right now because mm. it gives us so little time to do a show. Okay, what's end. worse, what that keeper just did or when a player gets subbed off late in the game when their team is winning and he takes forever to get off the pitch, it's like walking on the touchline. Yeah. I... <laughs> but, but, now, but now they're making them go on the far side, wherever they, they're, they're subbed off. They're yeah, but now, they don't even do that anymore. Mm. Yeah. They'll go to the one side, come back to the middle. Oh, you want me to go back to that side? Oh, this side? Just, uh, football oh, can I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that. seeing a few more cards. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind it. Round cards, by the way. Round, the yeah, Cup yeah round cards. Very, orange, very interesting. You know, orange. Um, <laughs> CFC. Yeah. Uh, so, some some shithousery, is it fair to say, do you think, on Instagram this week? I think so. Obviously, Alejandro Pozuelo causing a little bit of a stir. Sean, if you want to just bring that, that image up from Instagram. It's, this is Sean Johnson's announcement, and Alejandro Pozuelo cheekily comments three smiley faces. If you read further down, he's asked if he will come back to Toronto FC or if he's going to come back, and he says he's on his way. Now, Alejandro Pozuelo is absolutely just trolling here because he's <laughs> known and been notorious for absolutely owning Sean Johnson. His debut, if we all remember that special night at BMO mm. Field where he did a scoop into the top corner and then he followed that up with a Panenka, that was against Sean Johnson. A couple years later, in the MLS Cup playoffs, panenka over Sean Johnson. Mm. So Alejandro Pozil sees the signing and of course that's the first thing he's going to comment. I don't mind it. Fair play to him. I don't think he was treated completely fairly by TFC, but... If, if he funny. spent as much time you know, on the training pitch at TFC, as he did in social media post TFC, he might still be here, Ooh. adapting to Bob Bradley's That's tactics. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps not. All right, it's from 442. Just day one of a week full of 442. What could happen? The window, of course, as mentioned, Tuesday around 6 p.m. Eastern. Mm -hmm. So a lot could happen tomorrow. Stay tuned.